Hi and welcome to WEH Videos. My name is Skip and today we're going to discuss the ILS, Instrument Landing System. Show you how to use it, how to set up your airplane. And here we are in my, one of my favorite airplanes, a Boeing 777 by Ramses, a really sophisticated airplane to fly. So let's get started. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm not going to explain the components of the ILS system. As you can search the internet and find out the details of how it works. I want to focus on how you can use your navigation equipment for an ILS approach in X-Plane. So in this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you know how to use your nav radios and have some experience flying your airplane. To use an ILS system, you need to have a nav radio in your airplane, of course, and you need to have the ILS frequency for the particular runway that you'll be landing on. So to find that information, you need the airport approach plate, and you can get an approach plate for almost any airport in the United States by going to www.airnav.com slash airports. So let's go there and we're going to use San Francisco International runway 28 right as an example in this tutorial. So we go to airnav.com and we're just going to type in KSFO and hit find. And here we have San Francisco International Airport KSFO and if we scroll down and scroll down to the bottom of the page here you will find a list of runways and their approach plates and here we are ILS localizer runway 28 right we're gonna click on that and we're gonna download it and here is our approach plate so I've blown up the approach plate here and kinda of cut it in half so you could see it a little bit better Here's our top half of the approach plate over here, and we want to find our localizer frequency, which is located right here. And you can see that the localizer frequency for a runway 28 right at San Francisco is 111.7. So we're going to tune our nav radios to that frequency. All right, for the Boeing 777, we have entered that frequency into the flight management system or the flight manager computer, as you can see right here, 111.7. If you're flying a different airplane, maybe a Cessna or a little Piper or something, you've got your NAV1, and as you can see, we have that set at 111.7. So we're ready to pick up the ILS at 28 right. So there are two components to the ILS system. We have the localizer signal and the glide slope signal. The localizer signal is for horizontal guidance and it keeps you centered on the runway. The glide slope signal is for vertical guidance, keeping you on the right angle to the runway, about three degrees so you're not too high or too low on your approach. The glide slope is designed to guide you down to a decision point where you decide if it's safe to land. This is about 200 feet above the runway and it's at a specified distance from the runway and this allows you time to perform a missed approach as necessary and you'll find this information on the missed approach point on the approach plate. So what does this look like in the airplane for the pilot? For the Boeing 777, we have two magenta indicators. The one on the right in the vertical position is the glide slope, and the one at the bottom is the localizer. If the indicators are centered vertically and horizontally as they are here, we are right where we belong. Notice there are two points on the glide slope above the center and two below. So full deflection above or below on the glide slope indicator means that you are 1.4 degrees either too high or too low, uh, plus or minus 0.7 degrees. So if we are too low, 
that magenta indicator is going to start rising in our display. If we are too high, then our indicator will be below the center line. And in both cases, we are going to need to make corrections to get back on the glide slope. One very important thing you need to know here, if you are too high and the glide slope is not active or alive, you will never capture it. Even when you have the localizer frequency set correctly, the glide slope is not going to work. You will not capture it. You must be at glide slope altitude or below to capture the glide slope. A couple degrees above, uh, you might catch it. It's best to be right at that altitude or below. And you can check the approach plate to find this information of where you want to be when you intercept the glide slope. And we'll take a look at that in a bit. So that's how the glide slope works. And the localizer works the same way. If you are too far to the right, then the magenta uh, indicator will move to the left. And if you are too far left, the magenta indicator will move to the right. So you always make your correction towards the magenta dot. So in this case, it's on the right, you're going to turn the airplane to the right. If it was on the left side, you turn to the left. Same thing with the uh, glide slope. If, if, if the indicator's above you, then you want to uh, climb. If it's below you, you want to descend. In order to keep this short, I've just taken some shots of what the VOR indicator looks like in your Cessna, maybe a Piper or some other small airplane that you are flying. Uh, and this would be your VOR indicator. And as you can see, the needle is deflected to the left, so we are too far right. We'll need to turn towards the needle. And here we are on a perfect approach. And then if we're too far left, you can see that the needle is deflected to the right. And so we need to, again, turn towards the needle. Another uh, system you may have in your airplane is a HSI, horizontal situation indicator. And here you would set your course to the course you want to fly in your approach. And for San Francisco 28 right, it would be a 283, a heading of 283. And so you turn that knob and you head and you point your needle, the course indicator here, to 283. Now the CDI needle is the center portion here. And as you can see, it's deflected to the left which means we are too far right. And over here you can see it's deflected to the right, which means we're too far left. And again, to get back on track, to get back on course, we turn towards the CDI indicator. Here we are just flying in a different heading. So as we turn towards the 283 course, this needle, of course, will rotate around. So the same thing is true for the glide slope. If you're too low, the indicator will be above center and you need to climb. If you're too high, the, the glide slope needle will be below center and you need to descend. The same thing is true with your HSI system here. This is a little dot on the left side of your HSI indicator and you will see that the glide slope is a little too low and a little too high and correct in these three pictures here. It works the same way. So how do you position yourself for an ILS approach? Well, let's go back to the approach plate. There's a point in the sky that you go to fly to called waypoints. And for San Francisco, we have a fix, and it's called Dumba. And it is the IAF, Initial Approach Fix. This is where you're going to fly to to pick up the ILS. And it shows us right here how that's going to work. We need to be within this area right here. And at Dumba, it says we need to be at 4,100 feet. So if we fly 
towards Dumba from almost any direction. We want to be able to make a nice turn on 283. But if we're flying into Dumba, if we're at 4,100 feet, we're going to pick up the glide slope. And as you can see, the slope is right here. It's going to take us down to our missed approach point. Notice also the glide slope has altitudes indicated at other fixes as you get closer uh, to the runway on the glide slope. We have Axmule and Seepen. At Seepen, we should be at 3,200 feet and at Axmule, 1,800 feet. Also notice at the bottom here, it lists miles. So from Dumba to Seepen, it's 4.2 miles. From Seepen to Axmule, it's 4.6 miles. And from Axmule to our IM or our inner marker, it's 5.2 miles. So a total of 14 miles from Dumba to the runway. So I hope this helped you a little bit here. This video is getting a little long, so we're going to have to go to a part two where we'll actually fly a couple of ILS approaches in different airplanes. So I hope this helped you understand a little bit about the ILS system. If you like this, please click the like button. If you would like to leave me a comment, that would be great, or you could send me a message. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless.